So this course was created because many of our students um, needed a refresher in basic math and science concepts. So we worked as a team to come up with this list you see of topics that were considered important prerequisites for understanding vacuum systems. Um, we divided it into eight modules that you see here. And so the modules are done either um, as a one week um, unit or sometimes or in a two week unit depending on the course that they take. Um, so part of one of the aspects of the gap analysis can be helping identify if there are basic topics missing from this list. So that's one thing that we would welcome suggestions for. Um, you'll notice that the concept of vacuums does not appear directly until about vacuums per se, it's mostly about things you need to understand in order to understand vacuums. So there are um, examples of vacuums sprinkled in throughout the course, but actual vacuums are only a small part of this course. Um, so we built a course around these topics using research-based teaching methods. And research has shown that students learn best through interactive or active learning methods. And so one way we do this is by providing these background notes, backbone notes, with much of the content of the course already there. So they, the students get this workbook and it, you know, looks like this. Um, and this is one page from the workbook. And then they watch video lessons and take notes as they watch. All right, so that's one way that they're interacting with material, but they, it's kind of a guided note taking because they don't have to write everything down. They actually get to spend time thinking about it rather than just writing, as, writing madly the whole time. So I'm gonna show you a little snippet of that. So this is, I'll just show you a little bit of this particular lesson from that page. So this is the page they get, and then uh, you'll lesson, hear me we're doing this. Electrons in the atom. Can you hear so that? So far, we've focused on the protons yep. and on the neutrons, but now we're looking at the electrons. So, this picture on the left is the same pictorial representation of boron that we have seen before. So, because it has five protons, it is boron. And because it has a total of 11 particles in the nucleus, it's boron 11. And we say that this is a neutral atom because the number of electrons is five and equals the number of protons. So atoms are neutral when the number of positive particles, protons, is equal to the number of negatives. Okay, but what about when it's not? Okay, so that's what we call an ion. An ion is when the number of electrons do not equal the number of protons. Okay, so when they are equal, the positives kind of cancel out the negatives. Okay, so there's a little sample. I'll show you another little section of the same video where um, it goes on. Only things that can be ions, you can also have molecules that are ions. So let's talk about molecular ions. All right, so you can see it, it, it starts simple, it kind of builds to more complex. And then what you'll also see on this particular picture right here is that there's a box, that blue box, with um, something that says try this. So the, the other aspect, um, let's see. So the, another aspect of the course that makes active learning is that we have these try this problems throughout the, throughout the course and throughout each video lesson where the students are asked to pause and to try something that's related to what we've been talking about. Are you seeing my notifications too? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, um, so they have, so some of them are pure math, like you can see up here. Um, this one's about graphing. This one, this is an example where it's talking, um, it's talking about a pressure conversion, but it uses the word vacuum chamber in there, just, you know, throws it in there. And another one over here where they talk about what's going to stick to the walls of a vacuum chamber. Not that they know much about vacuum chambers, but it just throws the words in there. So, so they're, they're applied to vacuum systems, but they're not directly about vacuums. 
come. And stu so students never go very long before they get to try a little bit of what I've been talking about in the lessons. But then there are some more in-depth um, activities that are done. And each module has two of those. So this is where they get more in-depth practice, more application of the, what they're doing. So that includes worksheets. They have to turn in worksheets. Some of them are case studies. And then the one I wanted to show you was a simulation. All right, so this is a gas properties simulation and you can have this little um, pump. You can pump molecules into the chamber. You can change the volume of the chamber. Um, you can heat it underneath, change the pressure, uh, change the temperature, heat it up. You can read the pressure. Um, and then you can do things like, um, you can also change the size of particles you have in there, make smaller ones, bigger ones. There's a lot of things you can do. And there's a lab that they go through to do all these things. And they, they go through um, holding things constant. Let me see, I'll put some more molecules in and they can hold temperature constant, and then they can vary the volume and see how the pressure is affected. So they can do a Boyle's Law experiment. And in that lab, they end up doing lots of different gas law experiments, taking data and then comparing them to graphs, much like in that try this that you saw with the different, different graphs. They also can switch and talk about molecular speed they can see how increasing the temperature is going to increase the speed of the molecules. They get faster and faster as the temperature goes up. So there's a lot you can do and they do labs like that. So that's some of the interactive things that they do. Right back to this. All right, so um, they also have a, a simulation on building atoms, one on Ohm's law, there's various ones. So each, each module has a bunch of lessons, like, and they're all short, they're all five to 15 minutes long, and they all have the try this problem sprinkled in, and then they also have these various activities, two per module that they need to do. And at the end of each module is a quiz, and there's also a midterm and a final to, um, to see if they're retaining the knowledge. So that is kind of a quick overview of the course.